Wow, wow. I'm excited today. We have a very special guest. Welcome to BTV, Brian Rashid Global. Today we welcome a very special woman, a very special leader, and a very inspiring human being, Fareshta Faruka. Thank you so much for being here. Lots of things to talk about. You are the founder of Code to Inspire, a very cool initiative that is helping women in Afghanistan learn how to code, empowering them, setting them up for the future of um, the digital world. So tell us a little bit about who are you? Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's such a pleasure to uh, be with you guys. So, pleasure is ours. Um, yeah, as Brian said, my name is Fereshte Deferu. I was born as an Afghan refugee in Iran during the Soviet invasion to Afghanistan. Um, I was born in a very really small town in the border of Iran and Afghanistan. And, uh, I finished my high school in Iran and then moved to Afghanistan uh, one year after the fall of Taliban in 2002. In Afghanistan, I got my bachelor's in computer science and um, I went to Germany and I got my master's in computer science in Technical University of Berlin. Uh, went back to Afghanistan and I taught as a computer science professor for almost three years. Um, then I came to the United States. I founded a non for profit where we opened 13 media labs for the girls in high schools. And then in um, January 2015, I founded Code to Inspire as the very first coding school for girls in Afghanistan. Fantastic. And tell us a little bit more about like, why coding, why women in Afghanistan, why was that so near and dear to your heart? Sure. Um, so definitely there are different factors that made me to think about how I can create a very safe and secure environment for the girls that not only they come and get educated, but yeah. also there would be a broader aspects of finding employment opportunities for them and being financially independent. Um, Going back to when I was a refugee, uh, looking back at that time, um, certainly there were a lot of challenges that I was facing and my family, and one of them was certainly accessing education. So um, we had a lot of hard time to, uh, to get the right paper to go to school. So uh, looking at that, that how it is important for you to access the equal resources of education, um, really uh, made me inspired to give back to the community. Um, so these are some of the uh, personal things for me uh, to think about um, opening code to inspire, but also um, the cultural issues and the um, things that are happening in Afghanistan, for example, safety and security is a big concern for women. If you want to travel in other cities, uh, majority of the families won't let their daughter to travel alone by herself, so it kind of limits you and you're stuck in your hometown. Why, why won't they let them travel to other cities by themselves? So one aspect is the safety aspect. So if you want to, for example, from Herat, the city I'm from, yeah. go to Kabul if you want to take the road, there's a threat of Taliban. So you don't want to risk your life. And uh, culturally, it's not part of our culture that the girls go somewhere alone by themselves or um, live somewhere by themselves. Like We don't have a culture of roommates. So unless you have a trusted family member in other cities. So, um, But there are some families that they allow their daughters. Uh, but it's not too much so um, so it technically uh, make you not to be free to to, to, to travel and um, what technology enables is that you don't need to actually be physically somewhere uh, virtually you can do a lot of work online without being worried of anything without risking your life or right traveling alone or right. so that's that's really interesting and then what kinds of things have you seen in terms of progress uh, since starting Code to Inspire for the participants. First of all, how many people are in your program? So our program is an after-school program. Yeah. We do have 80 female students. We started with 50 female students. We opened on November 2015. We do have students from computer science and high schools with different age uh, group and also educational background. Although the interesting point is that some of them were good in English and computer, but some of them, they didn't have any knowledge of computer. Some of them, they never touched a computer, never been online. And then what happens, how do you, if at all, do you help them get jobs after they graduate the or they go through the program? Yes, so the, the ultimate goal for us is uh, certainly finding employment opportunities yep. for our computer science students. 
right now we have 20 computer science students in our program and um, the goal is to help them to create a portfolio of their work so that we can reach out companies and any kind of like outsourcing um, opportunities so that we can give the work to them so they do work online and they get paid online. And what kind of relationship building are you doing on the company end to make that happen? So we, right now, we try to create this kind of like a, a, a presentation or a pitch of our students' work with their skills, yep. uh, with the programs that they have developed so far. So I try to reach out to any companies, meet them in person, talk about our girls' program and see in which capacity they're interested to help. There are already two outsourcing projects that we're working on um, that very exciting. So these are like the very first opportunities for our girls. So cool. that's how we try to approach the customer. And are the companies in the US or are they all over the world? Um, because I'm based in New York City, so yep. mainly I interact with a lot of companies based in the US, but we're open on any kind of like outsourcing any part of the world. Um, how are you funding this? Or do the, is it a free program for the girls? Is it like, how are you funding it? How does it work? Yeah, the program is certainly free for the girls because the, the financial situation of a lot of families is not in a, in a way that they can afford extracurricular activities. Yep. So everything is for free for the girls. And uh, in case of funding, um, we started actually uh, the coding school with a crowdfunding and Indiegogo. Our goal was to raise um, twenty thousand dollars, and we actually raised twenty-two thousand dollars. Then certainly, I mean, as a not-for-profit, uh, we write a lot of grants. We apply for awards or any kind of like uh, financial fellowships, or um, certainly grants uh, is a main resource of um, raising funds. For a lot of people that watch the show or that follow us on the social world wide web want to start something and they don't know how so like this is i think there there are two really cool things that, for having you on the show i mean three one like you're just an incredibly inspiring human but two and three um you come from a place where 99.9 percent .9 of the world would have made excuses about why they couldn't do what you just have already done and number two you've actually not only overcome that those obstacles but you've executed and you've built something and it's like running um, so what would you say to all the people that let's start here I have an idea how do I make it happen what would you say to them so uh, going back again to the roots of being a refugee uh, when my mom uh, and family moved to Iran they left everything in Afghanistan they had pretty good life in Afghanistan, but then when they went to Iran, they started with only a suitcase and very basic um, equipment. Yep. Uh, my mom um, learned how to make dresses. Uh, so by selling the dresses, she could bring income to the families. And with all that money that my mom made, uh, we could go to school. Um, and um, So was it just was it you and mom and siblings? or Eight kids in the family. You, mom, and eight kids. Yes, dad, dad two or yes. dad two? Okay. Um, so yes, eight kids in the family, it's a lot of kids, so it's certainly, <laughs> um, it's certainly financially, it's very difficult to uh, kind of manage when you go yeah. to a new country and start a new life. Um, so during that, I, I certainly uh, can say like I learned a lot from my mom. I, you know, I learned that like with empty hands, you can start and make great things uh, if you believe in yourself and you really have a faith in what you're doing. And I always uh, kept this with myself. And when I went in Afghanistan, and um, I saw that there's still challenges for the girls. They're very talented, but unfortunately, there's no. Um, you, you don't find a way to give them a chance to speak out and, and show their skills. And that's what's always uh, near to my heart. That I want to help them. I want to give back. I mean, you face challenges. People don't like it. Some people don't like when you say women's empowerment. I want to educate these women. Um, some people are going to get upset because they think, oh, if the women are going to be empowered, then they're not going to listen to us. Well, I mean, they do have a voice. <laughs> I mean, I think that just my takeaway from this conversation, and it's the same thing that I felt when I met you at the TED event, is if you listen closely to what she's saying, you, you are a real example of a hero because I love that thing that you just said about with empty hands you can start something. Like that, by the way, needs to be like the title of this uh, video. Um, not only did you do something that wasn't popular, but you actually didn't wait, like literally didn't wait for anyone to give you permission, 
Like you didn't ask the government of Afghanistan or the government of the United States or like you went out to the people. So, you know, we had a, a gentleman in here yesterday, a young man named Pedro, who started a thing called Smiley Go, also an immigrant from Peru, came to the United States at age 18, has started a company that's growing really quickly. And I just, for me, it's really, I think the, the, the most exciting part of why I do this is because like if you are watching and you think you have an excuse for not starting something, like I really want you to watch this thing again and like watch the one yesterday again. And for me, what I'm trying to, to show you is that your excuses mean nothing to me. If your excuse is I don't have time, okay, well then just watch this again, right? Like, so for me, that's what's really inspiring about you is you just have a million good reasons not to start and you just found one to start and then you just did it. And um, it's just another classic, I love good success immigrant stories because I just think like I said yesterday and I'm gonna sound like a broken record, I told this guy Pedro, like, I just think immigrants in this country have an insane advantage. Anything else you'd like to share before we wrap? Well, thank you very much for having me. It's always good to see you, Brian. I enjoyed our conversation, and I hope that your audience um, um, change a little bit their perspective about Afghanistan. And now they see that there are a lot of good stories happening in Afghanistan, yeah. and Afghanistan is not all about war and destructions. But we do have good stories, and um, hopefully it will help them to learn more about my country and um, be open to, uh, um, to, uh, to, to, to learn more about Afghanistan, not uh, only relying on social media and the war news. Um, American so, media. Yeah, and if you think that um, you want to help us, feel free to email us. Yeah, you can find in our website, and we would love to hear from you. Great. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was super fun to have this for you. I'm inspired. I hope you're inspired. It's your hour. It's your life. It's your dream. So go get it, because if you don't, no one else will. Thanks for watching.